This video is a features overview and a tutorial of Pages for the iPad. Pages is Apple's equivalent of Microsoft Word. They function very similarly, in, but in terms of workflow, um, there's quite a few differences, and that's what we're going to kind of pick apart in today's video. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new document. Now, when you open up Pages for the iPad, you have the option of opening a previous document or creating a new one and we're under a sort of a choose a template mode at the moment and as we look through we can see many different sort of starting points um, to help you get going quite quickly and there's loads of different types of um, templates as there are on a desktop version as well but what we're going to do is we're just going to open up a blank document by just tapping on the appropriate template so now let's take a look at the, the sort of the user interface now, where it differs from Microsoft Word, what we're used to with Word is having a lot of tabs along the top and all the functions you can kind of find uh, quite quickly through the menu bar at the top. Pages takes a bit more of a minimalist approach. So there's all the functions are still there, but everything's just hidden away a little bit. So what we're going to do is um, show you, first of all, how to sort of look around the document and make a few changes. So you can actually pinch to zoom. Uh, zoom in or zoom out so with just two fingers on the iPad draw them together um, you can see a bit more of the page or you can zoom in if you need to look a bit closer if we have a look at the top left we can see the word documents and if we tap on that that just takes us out of this document and back to our document selection uh, part of the app but just next to that is a square uh, square divided up into three sections if we just tap on that that gives us few options so there's different sort of things we can have available to us as we're working through our document. So if we look at the first one, that's page thumbnail. So if we're de uh, dealing with quite a big multi-page document you're going to be jumping backwards and forwards for, that's going to be quite useful. Um, all of your pages will appear down that left-hand column. We also have the option of viewing more than one page at the same time. If I just use two pages, um, we'll have a page on the left and a page on the right. Now at the moment I've only got one page open, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit enter. Um, I will show you how to do page breaks in a little while, but I'm just going to show you. Now we've got two different pages that we can work between. If we go back to that view options panel, um, I can also show at all times a word count. So as I type um, some words, we can see that the word count gets updated. And that's quite useful if you're working for a particular assignment where there's a, a word limit that you need to stick to. We also have a ruler at the top gives an idea of replacing particular elements that aren't text, uh, sort of diagrams, um, shapes, images, whatever. We can just get an idea of how big that would be on a printed page. And then smart annotations, we can turn that on or off. Now, I'm going to come to smart annotations sort of a bit more towards the end of the video to show you what that actually is. So that is how we sort of change the view or what's uh, visible on the page as we're working. Now what we're going to have a look at now is how to uh, a couple of things. First of all, how to change the name of the document. In the top, in the middle, it says blank three. If I want to change the name of this document, I can just tap on it once and I can just uh, give it a new name. There you go, new thingy. Right. Now what we're going to do is uh, look at some of the sort of the document setup options that you have. Um, in the top right corner, we have three dots. If I tap on that, we have the sort of the more menu. We're going to look at this in a lot more detail um, towards the end of this tutorial. But if I go down to where it says document setup, that allows me um, to make a few different changes to the page. So I can change um, the margins. I can just sort of drag those out and adjust those. Um, as I need to. Now if I tap in the top right corner again we have this kind of square image with dotted line. That is where I can change from portrait to landscape. I can change the paper size. I can turn off headers and footers if that's what I want to do. And there's a few different options for you to use there. So we're just going to come out of that. Let's put it back in a portrait I think. Right, well, let's look at entering in some text. Now, there are two ways to do this. If you have a, an iPad keyboard, you can just type on the keyboard. I've got one connected at the moment, which is why it's not visible. If I just disconnect the iPad, you can see the on-screen keyboard will appear, and you can type using that. Uh, 
Okay, I'm just going to connect this iPad keyboard again. Okay, so I've typed some text, but let's say I've made a mistake. I want to undo something. Um, if we have a look at the top left again, next to our view options, we have the undo button. So I can just tap undo once it gets rid of it. If I want to redo something, I have to tap and hold on that icon and just go redo. The keyboard shortcuts for this would be Command and Z to undo, Command, Shift and Z to redo. Now, if I want to use keyboard shortcuts, if I just hold down the Command key, it will actually display some of the more common um, keyboard shortcuts that you would need when using this app. So I'm just going to type in a few more words. It just gives a little bit more of a document to work with. I think we see a pattern here. Okay, now let's look at how we select uh, a particular word or a particular line of words. So if I just tap, if I double tap on a word, that word is automatically selected. And then we have this sort of context menu comes up. I can cut, copy, delete. I can replace. Um, I can look. I can define. <laughs> if you need to look up a particular word in the dictionary, um, I can turn it into a link. I can bookmark it, which I will come to in just a few minutes. Um, I can highlight the text. So I have this particular something in a document you want to highlight to sort of to, to stress its importance. You can do that. I can add a comment, which is quite useful if you're working on a document collaboratively and you need to leave some feedback for someone else edit editing a document. And then I can tap on style and I can copy a particular style. If I've changed the typeface um, and I want to copy that style, but not necessarily the word, I can copy that style and paste that style onto um, another word. Can't see the difference right now, but I will show you that a little bit later on. Now let's look at how to and change the look of this text. Um, in fact, I'm gonna select a whole line, and if I wanna select a whole line, I can triple tap on a line, and it selects the whole line or a whole sentence. Now, if I go down to the bottom strip, along the bottom of the screen, we can see a few options for editing the text. This is one way of doing it. So at the moment, my typeface is Helvetica, and if I just tap on that, I have the option of changing to a different uh, typeface. Let's just pick something a little bit different. Okay, so I can change the typeface like that. I can also change the size of the text. Now if we move our eyes towards the bottom right of the screen, I have a uh, sort of two capital A's. Um, if I just tap on that, I can actually choose a different size. And within that menu, we can also make it bold or underlined. Um, and it's got a basic functions there. Next to that, we have the alignment. So I can align that in the center, um, to the right, or justify if I'm dealing with a paragraph of different text. And then let's have a look at the, the last icon on this menu. If I tap on that, this deals with uh, page breaks, section breaks, line breaks, etc. So as I mentioned earlier, you saw me hit the enter button loads of times to create two pages. You don't have to do that. You can just hit page break. It automatically uh, creates another page for you just there. Now, if you move our eyes all the way to the left of that strip at the bottom, we have this little arrow uh, with a line next to it. If I tap on that, I can actually indent the text, move it back or I have the equivalent of the tab function. That's useful if you don't have um, a keyboard, a physical keyboard with your iPad. And finally, if we move our eyes all the way to the right, we have this little downwards arrow and you can actually hide this menu if that's what you want to do. Although, as soon as you start typing again, then it reappears. Now that's one way of editing some of the text. There's a different way, there's a different menu that we can use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my next sentence by triple tapping. And if we move our eyes to the top right of the screen, we see a paintbrush icon. This is a way of editing something. This menu changes based on what you have selected. So if I have an image selected or a table, this will look completely different. It'll give me a whole new set of options. At the moment, because I've got text selected, it's text options that it's giving me. 
Now under this, we can change the paragraph style. So if I want a title, a subtitle, or a heading in red, um, I can do that. If I tap the edit button at the top, I can actually um, rearrange the order of these and that's quite useful if you find yourself using, I don't know, the red heading more often. I can move that to the top. It's a bit quicker to get to. I'm going to also hit the plus icon to create a new version of that. And we're going to come to that in a moment. So actually, just to rename this. I'm going to hit done. Now I'm going to hit the, uh, the text uh, title just at the top there to go back. And within this, I can um, change the typeface, just like we saw on the other menu. I can um, underline it if I need to. We have the option to strike through. If I tap on the three dots, we have further character styles. So in addition to sort of all the basic ones we've been looking at, um, we can change sort of the baseline. Now I can capitalize particular words. I can make it all capital letters or I can make where I've hit shift and typed a letter um, that that one's slightly bigger. Um, we've got title case um, and a few other bits. And at the bottom here, we can change the background color of the text to whatever you want it to be. I'm just gonna put it back to white, I think. I'm gonna hit back here. Now, now I've edited that text, what you'll notice is up the top where it says paragraph style, where we chose the sort of the title style or whatever, where I created that new one, I've got update. And what I can do is any adjustments that I've made to a particular paragraph style, I can actually save that. So I don't have to keep redoing it every time I'm working within this document. Also under this menu, uh, we have alignment tools. Um, I can have bulleted lists, sort of either with a dot, a letter, or a number, or a dash. Um, I can indent, just like I did before. And also here, I can adjust line spacing. Um, paragraph spacing, before and after as well. And what I also have at the bottom is the option to create columns within the document. So instead of putting text or my content within a table to create those columns, I can get pages to just do that for me. I can just change the number of columns that I have. Um, keep it equal column width or change, uh, or change the size of each column, etc. So they're the basics of how we might edit the text, save some preferences within the document um, to help make our workflow a bit quicker and sort of present our items of text in a different way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how to add different elements or different objects to this document. In Microsoft Word, we need to navigate for a few different tabs to work out what we want. But in Pages, all of this is found underneath one menu. At the top right, we have a plus icon. And if I tap on that, we have different things that I can add. Let's go to the first option here. This is a table. And if I just swipe along, I've got all these different table styles. It is possible though to edit them after you've applied it. So I'm just gonna pick this one. And it automatically adds a table here so you can begin entering in your information straight away. Now, let's say I'm not happy with how this particular table looks. Maybe I don't have enough columns or maybe I need fewer columns. And now this table selected in the top right corner of the table, we have a white circle with two uh, vertical lines. And if I tap on that, I can adjust the number of columns inside my table. You can also adjust the number of rows on the table. If you have a look at the bottom left corner, we have a circle with two horizontal lines. If I tap on that, I can have more or fewer rows on the table. Now with the table selected again, if we have a look at the sort of the bottom corner, we can see some blue circles. And if I tap and hold on that, I can actually just resize the table quite easily. Now to start entering in text, I can just tap on a cell um, and I can just begin typing in a few bits of information. Great. 
Now to edit the style, the look of a table, we can use the sort of the, the edit menu, which is found at the top, just like when we're editing text. But look, when I tap on that paintbrush icon, it gives me a whole new set of options. So here I can actually just change the look of the table. Um, I can add a table name, I can add an outline. I can have alternating rows. If you have a look, that's where we have each row is shaded um, between two different colors just to help it be more readable. And that's useful if you're dealing with quite a big table on your document. Under grid options, we have the option of uh, turning on or off particular lines within the table. I can change the typeface of the table. And also change the font size. So that's under the table options. If I go to cell within this, um, I can tap on a particular cell and make adjustments to this one cell, or I can select multiple cells um, by expanding the selection by tapping and holding on the blue dot. And I can do that. And we have the usual um, text editing options there. You can also change the alignment within a cell, whether it's uh, heading towards the top, the middle or the bottom. I can turn off text wrapping within the cell. Um, I can change the color within the cell or the column. Um, and I can add a gradient or I can add an image. And then this is great. I can add conditional highlighting. Now to do that, I'm actually going to select um, my second column, which has some numbers in. So we go back to this menu, add conditional highlighting. This will um, adjust the look of the cell based on what's entered in. So if I have a number equal to 300, I can make it highlight in orange. Now, if I have uh, an item that's greater than 400, I can use greater than 400 and I can make that green. And because these, the two numbers at the bottom are both more than 400, it automatically turns that cell green. So we're getting some functionality that we'd normally find in Excel or numbers being brought over to the pages app. Under the format part of the menu, I can actually change the cell type, like what the content will be. So it could be a currency, or it could be a percentage, um, date and time, text, whatever you want it to be. Now under the arrange menu, this is where we can look at um, how the object, or in this case, the table, um, fits in amongst the text and the rest of the page. So if I have a look at text wrapping, I can have the text move around it. So when I move the table up, it kind of moves in amongst the words. Um, or I can make it specify it be above and below or none. Um, none's probably better for images. And I will show you that a bit later on. But it means that the, cut the table covers the text. So they just have those options there as well. So now we're going to add another item. And if I tap the plus icon in the top right, and we move over to the next option, I have different graphs and charts that I can add. And these are actually really, really good. Again, we're bringing some of this Excel type functionality over to pages. I'm going to tap and add a simple uh, bar chart. It's automatically put on there for me. And you'll notice that obviously this isn't the data that I necessarily want. So with it selected, I have a context menu and I can choose edit data. It brings me into this um, table here where I can edit in the, the, the data that I need. So um, if I just do sales and I don't know, refunds. Um, so let's do 700, 600, 200, June's a poor month and 1000. And then my refunds and if i click if i tap on done you'll notice that the table automatically um, updates based on the data that i've entered so if i now go to the edit menu at the top you can see again the context of this menu has changed based on what i have selected so i can actually um, choose different colors for my chart i can turn on or off the chart title and the alignment of that title um, i can have the legend there or not so the legend tells me what each sort of co uh, color might represent. 
I can choose whether or not I have a border. I can choose the typeface, the font size, um, whether or not I have value labels within the columns, which might which might make it quite um, readable. So the number format that works predominantly with if I'm working with decimal points and how many um, numbers after the decimal I'd like to have. Now I can choose whether or not I want rounded corners. I think that works particularly with the small amounts of data, but it's there. And I can choose the chart type. So I can have um, a stacked column. That works quite well with the data I've entered in. Um, all these different charts and chart types that I can add, which is great. Now, if we ha if you move along to X axis, there's a few um, other things that we can add here. We can add the series name. Uh, change the category labels, add grid lines, uh, little tick marks to help separate or segment the data. I can add the axis name and axis line, and the same with the Y axis as well. And again, we have the arrange menu at the end, which again uh, lets us work with how the object fits in with the text around it. Now I'm going to go to the plus or the add menu again, and this time I'm going to choose interactive. Now interactive is where pages is trying to move beyond documents that you work with that are just for print. And what it allows us to do is display different tables in one sort of section. I'll show you what I mean. If I add an interactive chart, at the bottom here, we have this scroller. So if I want four different charts, I don't necessarily have to have four different charts all on the same page. If you notice, I'll drag this white circle, the charts change based on the month or based on whatever um, data you are trying to record. So this means that you're saving space on your document, but it also is a really nice function to add that element of interactivity. And the interactive function is also available on uh, images and videos which we'll look at in a moment. Now I'm going to go to the add menu once more and this time I'm going to choose a shape. Now you can see along here we have all these different kinds of categories of stuff we can add. I can tap the search icon if I want to search for something. Um, let's find an apple that would seem appropriate. Now, now I've added my object if I tap the edit menu uh, again this changes based on what I have selected, so I can change the color, add a border, add a shadow, add a reflection, change the opacity of how you know how see-through it is. Um, if I've got text as part of it, as part of the label, then I can edit that. If I go to arrange, um, again the same options as I had before, I can have none. Um, or any of the ones above. But I'm going to choose none because this lets you create a sort of watermark. So if I just move this up the page, and I can have an image sitting behind the text like that if you wanted to. Now back to the add menu. And what I'm going to do is tap on image, the last one. And we have loads of different things to choose from. I can add a photo or a video to the document. I can turn on the camera and take a photo. I can record audio and add that in. I can do drawings, um, which is quite good if you want to add like a signature. You know, that's that's pretty good. Now let's add a, a photo. So this is the image that I have added to the document. Now with that selected, I can go to the edit icon once more. Um, and it gives me a few different options in terms of borders, shadows, uh, reflections, the opacity. Once again, just like with the, the objects that you can add under image, um, I can add a mask. Um, that allows us to do some kind of cropping for the image. Um, I can add a description of the image if I need to do that. Um, and also you can arrange that just like you would with the other objects we've been adding in so far. 
Now back to the add menu, let's pick something else. Now what I can have is an image gallery. So what I can do is select multiple images and instead of having the images one after another on a document, I can have it so you can scroll through. So I've tapped on that. I can then tap the plus button and add my multiple images. Another way of adding an image is to make use of split screen and drag and drop. Um, I'll show you how that works. If I just swipe up from the bottom of the screen on my iPad to bring up the dock, I'm gonna tap and hold on the photos icon, drag that out to the right so I can see two apps at the same time. From my gallery, I can tap and hold on an image and just drag it in like that. And you know, if you have a couple of apps open side by side, that might be one way of, of doing that. Also with any objects, just in case I didn't make that clear, with it selected, we have our different dots on each side and each corner. So that helps me uh, resize. I can tap and hold to move a particular item around. Now what we're going to do is have a look at the last menu item on here, which we looked at a little bit before, is the more menu, the three dots in the top right corner. We have loads of different options available in terms of what we're doing with this document. I can, for instance, collaborate with others. So what I can do is enter in the email address or the Apple ID of another person I want to collaborate with. So instead of sending a document to them and them sending it back and a document goes backwards and forwards, you can have multiple, multiple people working on a document. I can uh, go to share um, and that will allow me to open this document in a different app. If you have like PDF expert, you can convert it to PDF, although you can do that within the pages app as well. Uh, but you can send it to your email client or whatever you want to do. I can also export as a few different formats, PDF, um, RTF, Word, and EPUB. So I can e export to different formats so other people can view that document. I have printing options. So if you have an air printer um, that you can connect to, you can find that just there. I can search within a document. Um, if I'll search for the word words. Um, it will show me where they all are, the settings icon, Let's me do find and replace. So if I want to replace the word, um, let's try that. So I'm going to replace word with things. It's going to replace each one. If I just tap on the eye, tap on the arrow to select the next word, I can go through, um, and that's how that works. Now I've also got smart annotation. This is a kind of a work in progress thing from Apple. What that lets me to do, what that allows me to do is use my Apple pencil uh, or your finger if you want to to do annotations on the document. So I can um, select a pen. Um, I can draw something around there, and I can just write needs editing. I'm writing with my finger. That's why it looks so bad. Um, the other functions that I can do like the eraser tool stuff, stuff like we get in like the notes app for iPad in addition to annotations I can also do drawing and all those functions that are there it's, it's pretty self-explanatory also have the option to change tracking um, so if a document is being edited collaboratively I can just turn that on um, and view what changes have been made to the document etc um, then we have bookmarks, which we talked about a bit earlier. So if you're dealing with a large multi-page document, you want to select particular bookmarks within it, um, you can find those here. I don't have any at the moment, but what I can do is make one. If I select a bit of text, I'm going to select, um, let's get that apple out of the way. I'm just going to select that, and it gives me the context menu. I can tap on bookmark, and there we go. That is now bookmarked. So when I go to the bookmarks part, it shows me where it is. Next, we have presenter mode. This is excellent for if you're delivering like a speech um, or you want some sort of auto cue for doing a video. If I show you what that is, what it does is it strips out um, all of the objects, all of the formatting, and just gives you um, all of the text. So we can see this here. Um, this makes it quite readable if you're doing some kind of speech. If we tap on the two letter A's at the top though, I can change the view, like the color. I can change the size of the text. I've also got auto scroll, okay? So I can choose how quickly or slowly it will scroll through 
the text, which is really useful. Now I'll go back to the more menu. There's a few other things to show you. I can set a password for this document. If I want a password protected document, I can do that here. I can publish to Apple Books if that's something that interests you. We have documents set up that we had to look at before. We also have settings, so I can change um, whether or not the comments are displayed, the author name. Um, I've got auto correction settings. And then finally, we have a few options if you want to get a bit of help and assistance with pages. So that'll take you to a particular web page or help you if you want to look for a particular function. And that is pretty much pages for iOS in a nutshell. It's really highly functional. But what's also nice about it is it strips away all the menus. Everything's kind of just put out of the way and you can get a lot you can get on with typing and 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 creating and putting your document together without being bombarded with all these different menu options. It's a very different approach to Microsoft Word, um, but it's certainly equally as powerful and in some respects um, more powerful. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel and I will be back soon with some more iPad tutorial videos.